Hey everyone, this is Daniel Guys from ED Films. You might be wondering where we've been for the last little while, and we've actually been really hard at work on some new software that we've been developing to assist in the creation of a feature film that we're working on. For any of you who have done animation, you will know it's a tremendous amount of work just to get something basic on the screen. So what we were thinking is, can we harness the procedural animation abilities of a game engine and actually give ourselves the option to perform scenes instead of having to keyframe everything manually? And what we, what we discovered is there was a way to pull the data directly out of Unity and bring it into Maya. So essentially, we get the best of both worlds. This example I created here was recorded from real gameplay data in Unity, then imported into Maya, where I set up three cameras and created this really quick cut just using a play blast. And it took me a matter of minutes to get this kind of dynamic flight path with this physical feel that someone's actually controlling it would have taken me forever using spline paths and a traditional keyframe method. This is a very simple example using the most basic features of the tools that we're building. And I'm really excited to start implementing this in a character pipeline using more complicated scenes with various assets that we do in takes and really start performing things like elaborate puppet sets and really use my skills to finesse instead of spending so much time just trying to block things out. So if you are interested in seeing how the current version of this plugin is working, I'm going to demonstrate how I put that jet scene together. Um, character stuff is still a little bit of work in progress, so I will get to that in a later video. So I have a scene here in Unity. It's just a generic asset set that comes with Unity when you download it. And I've got our plugin loaded up in the bottom right. And what I'm doing here is selecting scene objects and attaching our trackers to them. Every object that has an, a tracker attached to it will be recorded during gameplay. So I add these little trackers. You can see the objects are identified in the right hand side. So now when I actually start the game, the trackers are recording everything that's happening in real time. So everything I'm doing here is actually being recorded. You can change the frame rate uh, of the uh, recording later on or in the preferences, but right now I'm doing it 23976. You can see it's a little bit clicky right now, but that's actually just because of my capture program. It's in the game, it's all real time and it plays smoothly. So here I'm just changing my preferences. I'm just going to quickly go over some of these. You have your output format, you have your, your your world space units, you can change the scaling so that it comes in properly into Maya. Um, you can export your normals, your UVs, light map UVs, vertex colors, materials, textures, or just the animations. So right now I'm exporting the animation because I've already done the materials. What it does is it actually writes a Maya ASCII file and creates some MEL script right now. This will be automated later, but right now you can import the global or local MEL script. So it creates diff two different data sets. And here I've just opened up the Maya ASCII file and this is how it comes in. So the level's all there, no textures on it yet. And you can just paste the MEL script and it will process all of the animation data for the recorded playback. Our latest version actually does this all at once, so it doesn't cycle through each object. It just processes the animation really quickly. So here I'm just checking out my frame range, and I'm at about, about 500 frames, roughly. Here I'm just smoothing out the edges and the vertices on the actual model itself, because everything comes in really raw from Unity since we've rebuilt the geometry. Um, all the UV maps and everything like that come in clean, though, so everything is, is pretty consistent with what was actually made. So right now I'm just setting up some cameras really quickly and adding some basic lights and stuff like that to make it look a little better and just parenting the camera to the to the aircraft itself. So now you can play back the scene and see that everything is coming in as you would expect. The cool thing about this is this is just a first pass so this can actually be polished and refined and this data can be plugged into pre-existing rigs as well. So you could add a lot of extra features onto this that don't exist in Unity and start doing some paint effects and really fun stuff like that uh, and have the objects react to it. So as you can see, everything worked as you'd expect. The next stage I'm going to go through here is just adding the textures. This is a little bit of a process to show in Maya, but you can see the UV maps all work nicely. Everything's there. So it actually applies pretty quickly. You can, there are my textures there. Everything was exported. And so I've added a light and I'm just going to throw on the textures really quickly, see that everything lines up nicely. 
There you go. Pretty, pretty straightforward. A lot of this will be automated in the next versions of the program as it is, it is sort of platform specific, whether you're using Maya or 3D Studio Max or Blender. And, and we're trying to make sure that we can accommodate all of those. So the main thing has been making sure that the data coming out is consistent in the various applications. Okay, so now you can see the animation now that the camera's attached to it and everything is coming in really well. This is just a real-time render uh, screen grabbed off of Maya and I think it looks pretty good. I think the next thing we'll just check out here is redoing the animation. This isn't automated, this process yet. Um, we are definitely going to have a take system built into the exporter in Unity. So we will be able to cache a number of different takes and you'll be able to blend all of those um, in different ways in Maya, but that's still very much a work in progress. So what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting all the objects and breaking the animation connections so that I can fly the ship around again and reprocess the animation data. So here we go. In my settings, I'm going to turn everything off and make sure I'm just exporting the animation. And I'll play the scene once again. Now, the other thing you can do with this tool is actually decide what you want to track in this take. So you can turn off any of the other objects. So if you had done a much more complicated scene and you liked everything that happened, but you just wanted the aircraft, you could just turn off every, all the other trackers in the scene except for the aircraft specific ones. And that would just reapply the data here. So you can see I've generated a new Mel script in a new folder, and I'm just going to paste that in here. And this will reprocess the animation. Again, it's doing it object by object at the moment, but the latest version does this all in one pass, so it's much, much faster. But it's kind of fun to watch it process sometimes. The cool thing about this is I can get really believable action and animation in a procedural way in where I'm actually performing more so. It kind of has kind of this live action feel to it. You get more lifelike movements of the actual ship itself because it's based on human input. And it's not based on keyframes and spline paths. I actually created this really quick environment here to fly the ship over. And what was cool is I didn't have to do anything new. I just put the in the environment and the Unity object reacted believably to the terrain and gave me a whole new way to approach flying this ship. So I did a few different takes and brought those into Maya and I just play blasted this scene. This is recorded play blast, so it doesn't look super good, but I did a little bit of a filter on it. And I did three, three different camera setups and recorded it. And as you can see, I've got some really nice dynamic movements of the aircraft. It feels almost like live action footage in a way with the way the ship is moving. And since I was able to get this so quickly, I can put more energy into texturing and effects and cutting and, and positioning my shots. So thanks a lot for watching the video. If you guys are interested, post any comments or questions you have, and we will keep you updated on the progress and let you know when it's available.